Welcome to Comments Podcast, the show where we discuss a variety of topics with your host, Nina. We are midway through summer and there was a real ray of hope with the UK government announcement the 19th of July would be recognised as Freedom Day with the final lifting of lockdown restrictions, which some sceptics considered uh, the statement uh, hyperbole. After 18 months of living in a pandemic, the majority of restrictions have been lifted. Legal restrictions imposed by the government since um, March 2020 to manage public behaviour in order to contain the spread of COVID-19 would officially end and guidelines issued instead. The slogan personal responsibility has been echoed and for the vast majority of libertarians it's a cause of celebration. Of course the government had announced a few months ago of its uh, planned uh, unlocking roadmap and this was the final stage of lifting government enforced restrictions and a return to normal life. Most of the pandemic constraints have been lifted and the main beneficiaries have been businesses operating within the hospitality, events, sectors and couples anxious to organise their weddings. For the vast majority of the public, there's still a degree of hesitancy to discard all mask wearing and resume hugging or shaking of hands. Many are reluctant to throw all caution to the wind understandably and prefer the tentative approach to normal life. It is apparent from the data the pandemic is far from completely over. However, the success of the vaccine programme in the UK has ensured that greater freedoms can be restored, albeit gradually. Businesses which have felt the brunt of closure over the last 18 months from nightclubs theatres, sporting venues uh, can reopen their premises. The government considered it an appropriate time to lift restrictions after consideration of the data, but also, as I stated, due to the summer fire break provided with the closure of schools or the summer holidays, rather than consider postponing it till later in the year during winter, when the NHS is often under pressure. There is no perfect time for lifting of uh, legal restrictions, but there is a case for whether it is wise to automatically lift all restrictions completely or still retain a few crucial mandatory restrictions, for example, mask wearing on public uh, transport or, or in shops, as is the case in Wales and Scotland. Many people are still wary and erring on the side of caution as they are conscious of the reality that we are still living a bit a pandemic. An array of poll surveys convey a large percentage of the public will continue to opt to wear a face mask in crowded indoor places and on public transport. Greeting others with handshakes, hugs are still shunned and substituted with alternative greeting gestures of hand waves and bumping of shoulders, elbows shall we say. Um, Catching a train is a bit more cumbersome and if you are travelling across England to Wales and Scotland, uh, face masks are mandatory on public transport. Although many mayors have decided in, in England to impose restrictions retaining the wearing of uh, masks on public transports in their city as a condition of uh, carriage. Hence, in London, commuters are expected to wear a face mask unless exempt, and announcements are regularly made on the tannoys to enforce this further. Passenger numbers are low and confidence does need to be maintained for users of public transport and this encourages more people to continue to select uh, public transport for their mode of transport for many of their journeys, especially as more of us are now returning to back to work to their offices rather than uh, 
continue working from home. Although government restrictions have legally been lifted, the public are still encouraged to be cautious. Public health messaging has been so successful and the average person has modified their behaviour beyond recognition during the course of the pandemic from wearing face masks, washing hands or carrying a hand sanitizer and opening of windows for ventilation. The general public's knowledge of viruses has grown exponentially and we are aware of the precautionary measures we need to take to protect ourselves. The onus only being now that it's dependent on individual and personal responsibility. There is a caveat that restrictions may be reimposed if uh, COVID-19 cases rise exponentially or if pressure on the NHS, uh, UK's National Health Service rises. And we are constantly being reminded of that, the public. Already there has been an early warning announcement from September onwards from the government that entry to nightclubs, everyone will be required to have had uh, two vaccinations. This may also be extended to those attending other larger venues, for example, sports events, where they have a large crowd capacity. These venues are considered uh, to be potential super spread events and the reimposition of some restrictions will not come as a surprise. Already some countries where nightclubs, for example, were reopened, they have had to reintroduce vaccine requirements again for entry due to the increased spike of um, COVID-19 cases. In reality, despite the announcement of uh, Freedom Day on the 19th of July, little seems to have changed dramatically in our daily lives. Um, Members of the public still are on the side of caution. Um, You can observe many uh, shoppers and passengers still wearing masks in enclosed spaces and regular use of uh, hand sanitizers to minimise their risk of contracting coronavirus. We are all learning to adjust to do this new normal for the long term. Thank you for tuning in to today's episode. You can subscribe to the Comments Podcast via iTunes, Spotify and other major podcast providers.